Welcome to video number two, Problems with Automated Enforcement. In the last video you learned how automated enforcement technology works. In this video I'll describe many of the problems with automated enforcement, some of which may be used as defenses if you're facing a red light camera ticket. The use of red light cameras is often a controversial topic. Those who support them will argue that they encourage people to drive more safely by deterring bad behavior. People who oppose them often cite to studies that show red light cameras actually increase rear end accidents because they are used in place of proper traffic engineering. A traffic signal should have a long enough yellow light phase to allow people to stop safely before the light turns red, but most red light cameras take advantage of short yellow light times which increases the number of citations and also increases revenue for the city. It's a common misconception that red light runners intentionally drive through red lights. Most people try to drive safely for conditions and if the traffic engineering is proper, people will not run the red light. In fact, the vast majority of red light photo tickets are issued when the light has been red for merely a fraction of a second. These times are so short that it is often impossible for most people to perceive that the light was even red, which is why most people that receive red light camera tickets honestly believe the light was still yellow when they entered the intersection. Drivers approaching a yellow light are forced to make a split second decision. They can brake and risk getting hit from behind or proceed and risk the light changing to red before they cross a limit line. Red light cameras typically do not account for wet or icy conditions on the road, tailgating cars, or the different deceleration rates between vehicles. Yet by reducing the yellow light time and issuing tickets when the light is red for less than a second, you can begin to see why the red light cameras are a growing multi-million dollar business. According to California Highway Patrol records, it takes an average driver about three quarters of a second to realize that a light has changed to yellow and then it takes another three quarters of a second for that same driver to react to that yellow light. This means it takes a full second and a half for the average person to perceive and then react to a changing traffic light. This is important because it means that traffic engineering should account for this reaction time when setting yellow light times. If the light changes to yellow when the driver is relatively far from the limit line, it will be obvious to stop. If the light changes to yellow when a driver is relatively close to the limit line, it will be obvious to proceed. But what about the large area in between, where it may be difficult for the driver to decide whether to brake or proceed? This is known as the dilemma zone. If the duration of the yellow light phase is sufficient, then drivers should not be faced with the impossible choice presented by the dilemma zone. Each time a driver faces the dilemma zone, they may also be facing a ticket. If you examine the criteria used to determine where red light camera systems are installed, you will see that the focus is profit rather than safety. Municipalities install the systems at high traffic intersections, often with short yellow light times. It is also becoming more common to direct cameras toward drivers who make rolling right turns. The next video shows a driver who encounters the dilemma zone. He is cited for passing the limit line just four tenths of a second after the light changes to red. Here the driver of the black car is caught in the dilemma zone. It appears that he follows the car in front of him by a safe distance. However, he does not cross the limit line in time. He is cited for passing the limit line just four tenths of a second after the light changes to red. The driver didn't even recognize the light change and because it is such a close call it takes a computer to recognize the alleged violation. A police officer who personally witnessed the event would probably not have issued a citation to the driver. The driver received a ticket in the mail soon after the incident. Because such short times are involved, data errors can be a major problem. Without data superimposed on the photos, including the date, time, and red light time, the city could not issue the citation or obtain a conviction. Without the data, the city would just have digital images that could have been taken anywhere at any time on any date. Data errors may make the red light time appear longer, which can make the driver appear more culpable or guilty than he or she actually is. 
Uncovering data errors like rounding errors or calculation errors may allow the court to exclude the data from the photographs and possibly exclude the images completely. Another related problem is the denial of the right to confront one's accuser. When innocent people are accused by a computer, it is virtually impossible to cross-examine their accuser because it can't speak. Instead, one is forced to try and locate the records of programming errors and repairs in order to find out who the actual people are that built, maintained, and repaired the computer and what they reported so they can be subpoenaed to appear in court for cross-examination. Things like data errors, repair records, and maintenance records can help you impeach the credibility or accuracy of the computer. But to be able to truly confront your accuser, you would need to issue subpoenas to all the people involved in the design, programming, installation, implementation, and operation of the red light camera system. That could be dozens of people. Obtaining the necessary records and finding out who these people are is nearly impossible without spending a small fortune on investigation and legal fees, but even then it can be difficult. Without access to the records and to the identity of all the people behind the issuance of their criminal charges, most people accused by red light cameras find themselves trapped in the lonely position of having to prove their own innocence in court. In that respect, red light cameras are truly un-American. At Law Intel, we support policies that encourage safe driving, but we do not believe that red light cameras are the solution. We support visible police officers whose presence encourages safe driving and whose good judgment can be relied on when issuing citations. Proper traffic engineering, studies show that it is longer yellow lights, not red light cameras that greatly reduce the number of violations at intersections. And finally, we support education to encourage people to drive more safely. It may be cheaper, easier, and certainly more profitable to set up a camera than to hire a police officer to enforce the law. However, it is not safer. There are many limitations and problems with using mechanized law enforcement. In the next video, we'll discuss your options if you're facing a red light camera ticket.